honored to host the distinguished speakers, lecturers uh, for today's meeting. And we will be talking about open access and science as this is the International Open Access Week, which is between the 25th of October to the 31st of October. And this is a global community driven week of action to open up access to research. And the, this event is actually celebrated by individuals, institutions, or organizations like ourselves around the world. It's not just for us, but it's for all of us. And in 2021, the International Open Access Week is celebrated by the theme of, it matters how we know, how we open knowledge, building structural equity. We are, we're always talking about, especially in healthcare providers or research providers, equality and equity. So the topic is about this equity. And it will emphasize the open science should meet the knowledge needs of both researchers and the public by embracing diverse knowledge, practices, workflows, languages, and research arts. And during the week, the importance of providing equal participation of opportunities to all information producers and consumers and it will be just discussed among ourselves with the uh, general population and with the researchers and who is interested in research actually. So we are trying to build up or increase our capacity to improve the infrastructure for open access and open access research. So we'll start with Professor Luciano Sasso. Many of you know him very well. He's a very a good collaborator of Besma Lambakov University, and we have been uh, hosting him in different aspects in his field, but now we're gonna hear high quality of open access from him. He's a member of faculty of pharmacy and medicine Sapienza University, Rome, Italy, and he has authored many research articles since then, since his career actually began as a researcher. And his main field is about oxidative stress and antioxidants. But as far as I know, during the last few years, it has improved into research uh, properties and educational properties and et cetera. And he had coordinated several international research projects and have been a referee for many international and national projects, agencies and journals for the last 25 years. So it's my honor to introduce him and ask him to deliver his lecture. Please uh, go ahead. And before you start, I forgot about it. Sorry about that. We'll have all the questions at the end of the uh, three talks. If you have anything to be delivered to us, please use the chat box or the response uh, from the YouTube. And we will try to reply back to you at the end of the three lectures. Okay, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, uh, good morning, everyone. It's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, many thanks to the rector, Rumeiza Kazanjaklu, for the invitation. Uh, actually, is, uh, this series of uh, webinars uh, hosted by Basliam University are really successful. So we're looking forward to, to continuing this, uh, this series also because we are focusing on very important and strategic uh, topics for universities. So I think it's really nice. And uh, this is one of the few advantages that this trage tragedy of COVID-19 is giving us that is a bit easier to connect uh, online, to organize webinars, which technically speaking, they were possible before, but uh, they were not uh, well attended. So now I think uh, most of us are more available for these activities. And again, it's, it's a nice opportunity to share ideas uh, by, by Zoom. So without further ado, I will uh, share my, uh, my screen. Uh, to, I have just a few slides for to uh, talk about some uh, concepts and then of course uh, i'm looking forward to the discussion at the end uh, at the end of all the talks so um as uh, uh, the rector mentioned uh, you have actually different hats uh, so at sapienza university but i'm also president of unica which is an important association of universities uh, based in brussels uh, it's a network at the moment we have 54 universities in 38 capital cities and actually, uh, Unica is very much engaged on open access. So that's why, in this case, I would use uh, my hat as president of Unica to, to give this talk. Uh, Unica supported the Plan S, you know, as uh, most of you uh, know very well, uh, is an important initiative to try to make a full and immediate open access a reality. Uh, or online, you can easily find all the information if you want to know more about the Plan S. Um, the, the, the important thing, you know, when we talk about open access in, in Europe and elsewhere, 
is to uh, understand that there are different types uh, of open access uh, possibilities. Uh, there are journals which are fully uh, open access, so they only op they only publish in this modality, and some others that are more traditional journals, but still uh, they open up the possibility to uh, have an article, a single article in open access, if uh, the authors are willing uh, to pay a fee uh, for that uh, individual article. And of course, there are several projects like uh, European projects, uh, like Horizon Europe, for instance, and other uh, European projects supporting uh, the open access. But of course, the issue is that if, if a journal is a traditional one, uh, basically the financial model is to sell subscriptions to the libraries of our universities. And so basically, uh, this is a bit, I think, not fully un understood at the level of the scholars at our universities. That's uh, when you publish in a traditional journal, uh, very often the uh, publication appears free to the scholar uh, or to the groups of scholars uh, willing to publish. But then uh, uh, the journal, of course, uh, will receive uh, uh, you know, money from the libraries of, that, of the same institution. And overall, uh, the money that our institutions pay to uh, the traditional publishers is uh, is quite high. So uh, here, this is why it's interesting to have a director of your university online, because it's a, it's a very strategic choice. Uh, when you support open access, uh, of course, uh, uh, you, we need to make available for the scholars some funds to pay for the so-called uh, APCs. So uh, the, uh, the processing charges that uh, uh, journals actually uh, have when a scholar is willing to have an open access uh, article. And in that case, uh, the money is paid immediately uh, for that single article, but then uh, uh, there will be no charges for the libraries uh, overall. So this is, I think, will be interesting to discuss at the end, uh, what kind of approaches we should uh, uh, we should use, and overall, uh, uh, if it is actually even uh, uh, probably from the financial point of view, better for institutions to promote as much as possible open access, because in the end, uh, uh, the, again, uh, the money that the libraries has to pay to, uh, the, to have to pay to the to the to the journals to the publishers will be much less. And of course, uh, there's also an issue here of uh, civic engagement, because when we publish open access, of course, any person in the world will be able to access that publication. Uh, uh, on the contrary, if, if an article or, or, or anything else is published in the traditional way, uh, either you have to buy that individual article or issue, uh, or uh, you need to have a subscri subscription to, uh, to that, to a library. So many people uh, indeed uh, do not have access to some uh, publications just because those publications are not open access. So in a way to push in the direction of open access is also very important, I would say, for the society at large, because again, uh, that information will become uh, completely available for, for, for everyone. There is a, a point, and that's why I put it in the, in the title of my talk, about the quality, because of course, uh, tra some traditional journals are very well established. And then uh, uh, the scholars, of course, uh, uh, first of all, they want to publish in a high quality journal. And they try based on the, uh, you know, the article they, they wrote to try to reach uh, the highest possible uh, ranking, I would say, of the journals. And there, I think we need to uh, make another webinar on the impact factor, H index, and other uh, aspects. I think in one single webinar is impossible to discuss everything. But in in general, let's say that each scholar is trying to reach the highest uh, quality of of journals, of course, for his or her uh, publication. And again, uh, uh, for the traditional journals, there are some you know well-established rankings. So we know in each field which are uh, the best journals, et cetera. Uh, open access journals are a bit younger in general, uh, and some of them are you know, very well established already. There are some very good journals, for instance, from Frontiers 
or some MDPI journals are already well established. But in general, let's say uh, they, are, they are a bit younger. Uh, and so again, we have to be careful about the quality. And so when we say let's, hope, let's publish in open access, uh, it must be always, you know, first, uh, the, the first point to consider is the quality, the quality uh, of the journal. And here, linked to this point, there is uh, what I call here the challenge of the predatory journals. I think all of us, you know, we receive uh, every day uh, email invitations to publish in some journals, which sometimes are completely fake. They, they really, either they don't exist or they are really uh, bad quality journals and they actually have names similar to the uh, you know, traditional journals. Uh, and then uh, this is a thing is a challenge, especially for young people, because uh, young people, uh, they have less experience. Of course, they want to publish because of course, to establish their career, if they're doing a PhD or a postdoc, of course, they, they, they live in this uh, you know, publish or parish culture and they try to publish as much as possible. Uh, they have, uh, uh, you know, less uh, experience, so they receive invitations, say, yeah, we would like to invite you to publish in this journal. They are flattered by this invitation, then maybe they, they accept. And uh, they must track, of course, again, uh, if one of those journals is uh, well established or not, if it is a predatory journal. So there, of course, some more senior uh, colleagues in the university can help. There are also online some, uh, let's say, blacklists of journals which are considered completely fake. But still, I mean, this is an issue that I wanted to, to mention in, uh, in this talk. Um, then, as I briefly mentioned before, there are financial issues related to the fact that the APCs uh, typically are between uh, 1,500 and uh, 5,000. It can be roughly, let's say, 2,000 2, euros, roughly, but they can be a bit less or more depending on the journal. <coughs> Sorry. And uh, uh, for many scholars, I mean, uh, this is a challenge because uh, sometimes they don't have enough funds in their budget of their institution or laboratory or department or institute, that money. Uh, and then uh, so it can be quite a lot for some, uh, some scholars. Um, and uh, if, again, if they don't have a, a project that is already funded and allows to pay for this, for this fees, uh, this is a, is a big issue. And on the contrary, they know that they, could, they can publish for free if they choose a traditional journal. So many of them, they say, why should I pay now 2,000 euros if I, can, if I can publish for free in another good uh, traditional journal? So again, at the level of the institution, I think uh, more funds should be made available for uh, the scholars to publish in open access. Otherwise, most of them will choose the traditional way. So I will stop here. I just wanted to, uh, to share with you some, uh, some thoughts and I'm looking forward to the discussion later. Thank you for your attention. You are on mute. I think Romeza, you are on mute. Yeah, sorry. Uh, thank you for your uh, introduction to the topic on how we feel about uh, the open access and the publications. And now I would like to uh, introduce uh, Gülsün Güneş. Um, she will be talking about open access agreements in Turkey. And she graduated from 1996 uh, from Library Science Division of the Department of Documentation and Information at Istanbul University. She received her master's degree in 1999 from the same university and she was granted a doctorate from Marmara University in 2009 in information and records management. During the period till 2012, uh, she worked at Koch University School of Nursing. And then from 2012, uh, as an associate professor in the Department of Institutional Archives and the head of the Department of Libraries and Documentation at Marmara University. And I had the previous <clears throat> year to meet her with other projects. And uh, her academic studies mainly include research in academic library science, medical library science, health literacy, digital libraries, information, and technical services in the library science. And we would like to hear her lecture now. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Rumei uh, Sarjam. Thank you, my rector. It's a great honor to be here today with you. And dear distinguished guests, welcome. And also participants, you are, welcome. You are also very welcome. And I congratulate on 
international open access week for all over the world. And I'm so proud also in Turkey that we are celebrating long, long years, which is also Gültek in his uh, past president, uh, uncle's president for our association. So he has the flagship, you know, in, in open access and open science in Turkey. So again, thank you very much for this uh, introduction. And today, I especially, I would like to talk on uh, uncle's uh, transformative agreements, uh, uh, the perspective from the open science and open access, how we support open science and open access as a uh, consortia. And I would like to share, uh, let me share my presentation. And, uh, but firstly, I would like to introduce uh, uncles, who we are. And, and what kind of agreements that we are managing in Turkey and what is the uh, challenge and threats uh, for, for open access agreements, also for our uh, current agreements, uh, not only open access. I would like to uh, look with, uh, with your open access in the world, you know, and the Turkey. Also, I would like to give some, uh, some uh, agreements, one of our agreements and some world uh, experience uh, with you for today. So we are UNCOS, Anatolian uh, University Libraries Consortia in Turkey. We are a volunteer based association which, uh, which uh, establishing from the uh, library directors for the management, especially steering committee. And we have around 45 volunteer uh, librarians. Uh, in the, in the association who they are working, especially they, uh, their professional experience in international based uh, studies, uh, workshops and research group. But this is the very high quality uh, group in the association that they are coming as a librarian from the institution. So most of our most our uh, most of our uh, mission is uh, the consortium, the management consortium, uh, and managing the deals uh, for the for for the Turkey as a uh, uncle's consortia. Uh, we have uh, in Turkey two uh, consortium uh, structure. You can see that one is a state-based uh, consortium, another is a library's volunteer-based consortium. So we established in 2000 uh, with uh, some of our members, and right now we are a very big group uh, around more than uh, 194 uh, members uh, in Turkey. Each year, uh, you know, uh, we are getting our, our members' uh, numbers is getting higher. Uh, you can see also in the uh, exam. Uh, right now, we have around, this is roughly, we, I can say for uh, in 2021, where around uh, more than 1,500 uh, subscriptions, uh, uh, about uh, 82 uh, database packages or ebook packages i can say we can we can give you as a uh, as a number but this uh, subscription uh, or purchasing is changing uh, year by year because of the some economic condition or some uh, other economic problem in turkey i can say that so uh, i would like to give some ideas about the consortia uh, how it is big, you know, uh, in, uh, in 2019 and 2020, uh, we can say that uh, in 2020, uh, 75, uh, four contracts we uh, signed that and then we have uh, around 1,500 uh, agreements signed by institution, uh, I mean, from members through the UNCLOS consortium in 2020. And we can say that the, the total cost of this agreement around uh, uh, 13,000, uh, 13,000, uh, uh, not 13, 13 million dollars, you can say that. And then 
in 2019 also you can see that we have 75 contracts that we sign with our members with the again you know, more, more than uh, 1500 agreements from the institution and uh, it's roughly again uh, 12 million dollars uh, we can say that so when we compare with uh, 2019 and 2020 we signed a uh, number of agreements we signed that it's reduced by uh, 30% and the cost of agreement increased by uh, around uh, 6%, uh, you know. And when we look at a, uh, also 2021 agreements, you know, again, we, we, we, we uh, signed uh, around 82 contracts and with uh, more than uh, 1,500 1, uh, agreements with, the, with, the, with our members. And again, roughly again, uh, roughly again, the all total cost of agreements, $12 million. And in, in, when, you, when we go back in uh, 2020, we, we signed again uh, the total cost of, uh, cost of agreements around $30 million. If we, when we compare that uh, between 2020 and 2021, uh, a number of uh, agreements signed that we signed is increased by uh, 2%, uh, 2%, and cost of agreement reduced by around roughly 4%, we can say that. So, of course, uh, in our agreements and in, in negotiation, negotiation, we have some threats, you know, which means especially uh, in 2019, uh, the V18 in, in, is a big problem for us in Turkey. It's, it's uh, negatively affect our payments and our budgets. So uh, if, if you remember that times, you know, in 2019, the all the book electronic especially this is for electronic, uh, all the ebook packages and all the uh, journal packages uh, rates increased by uh, 80%, so which uh, it's affect us, our budgets a lot. Also exchange rate increases another big issue for us that we are, uh, it's, it's a big, uh, it's a big tears for us, you know. So another uh, issue we can say that when you when you see that from uh, last ten years currency exchange right now in uh, Turkish lira, especially uh, one one one dollar or one USD is around ten lira, which means that this is another big uh, issue for us that uh, the melting the tia to against the USD and euro will continue to affect our members' budgets. So because of most of our agreements payments, they are uh, in uh, currency, uh, you know, in, in euro or in uh, dollar or in sterling or another uh, currency. So it's affect us our uh, decision to, to subscribe or buy our electronic resources. So, of course, the COVID-19 is a different uh, offer some challenges also, you know, it's, it's, it's affect all around the world negatively but uh, because of the health issues uh, concern most of the publisher they open all around the world to to to support these health issues to to solve this problem as soon as possible so this is also another things how open access is important for all over the world that uh, access the uh, information. So Ancos also provide many uh, free content, you know, that, that they, they're also in the agreements uh, for all our members and also all over the Turkey announced these kind of things. Also, we find another things, especially in ILL and other platforms, uh, you know, uh, improve more uh, and uh, uh, about uh, COVID-19, between COVID-19. So we can say that libraries and librarians are the most uh, challenging jobs in, in Turkey that we work at the beginning of the uh, pandemics and still continue like that and to support open science and open access with their uh, resources. So in, in ANCOS, what we are expect, you know, uh, in, in, in agreements or uh, what we are fighting in agreements, especially price increases must be demanded not to uh, be over uh, zero at present. So, um, and, and normally in our uh, agreements, we are uh, we are expecting a minus one and to uh, for present. Uh, 
uh, in, in our experience in, in our agreements. So we experienced this logic for uh, 2019 and 20, uh, 2020 and try to continue the same uncle's uh, behavior for 2021. And most of the time we managed that, we realized, and we can say in uh, 70%. But in some, because of the content increase or other uh, issues, you know, uh, it is, this logic also is not working out. We can say that. So we mostly, uh, especially for the, this year, because of the uh, other issues that I can condition like that I uh, told you, we ask always the cost reduction. And all, uh, also in some agreements, we change some modeling, you know, uh, from our experience also, some members, uh, you know, uh, expectation. Uh, we can say that when we manage our agreements. Okay, let's look at the what's happening uh, in open access for the new open access publishing. Uh, this came from the uh, web of science in, in, inside. That I said, uh, the most of the open access publishing all around the world, and we can say you, you, USA, United Kingdom, and China mainland is the they are the, uh, they are the most pioneering uh, countries. So, what is this organi organization? When we look at that, this is for only open access, you know, all open access type of publishing, especially uh, USA or UK or uh, China. China uh, institution, we can say, with their Web of Science document and their citation. Uh, this is just an idea that I would like to give you uh, in, in my talk. But when we look at in, the, in Turkey, this is the four years terms, I can say. I mean, the four years term to, from 2016 to 2020. So uh, also in Turkey, and you can see some university name, Hacettepe, Istanbul, Ankara, Boğaziçi, uh, and Bilkent University or Mitu University, uh, that they are pioneering also, especially uh, our leader, especially in open access uh, publishing. So uh, as a consortium, maybe some of our members or participants, you know, I would like to explain, this is also, I am an academic person that I would like to give some specific, you know, definition. I, as a library, uh, we can say for transformative agreements, transitional agreements, or we then publish agreements or read or publish agreements that we can say uh, uh, for the uh, transformative agreements. But mostly they are known read and publish agreement. And which means open access cost payable in this agreement and covered by libraries subscription payments uh, to the specific publishers. So our members are libraries. So we are dealing uh, for our members uh, as also for for our country, these uh, transformative agreements, you know. And this charges from as article processing fees uh, to the publisher on time to time on behalf of the academics or, you know, uh, on behalf of the, some institution to open the uh, uh, articles. So uh, the cost of each uh, transformative agreement cover, covers not only the access to publish the scholarly journals, I mean, the, the, the read element, but also a piece of published element, you know, that providing many opportunities, uh, I mean, uh, for researchers and to, to publish open access. Uh, these are agreements are called transformative because they demonstrate an active commitment to making all research output open access. So most, most large academic journals, publishers are already have or currently negotiating transformative agreements in, in, in, in the world, especially this USA or UK or other uh, continents uh, countries, we can say. Uh, also, I would like to share the, the Turkey situation. We started uh, also many with, with agree, some agreements that we are discussing most mostly our members. But the the the, the uh, perspective changed a lot and the expectation changed a lot from the uh, universities. So uh, again, uh, it's important, uh, especially uh, for the uh, academic output to to to to, to uh, you know uh, access for all over the world to publish or to, to can be readable for, from the all over the world. But also, also we have some 
strategi strategies for read and publisher agreements, especially in, in consortia, this agreement is up to again the uh, increasing rates. Uh, again, annual or multi annual transformative agreements. But in Turkey, especially state universities, one, they are not willing to sign three year agreements uh, because of the, uh, the, the government, you know, some government uh, financial rules. So we are always asking one year, two year, three years agreement. Also, so we have some private universities that they are mostly asking us to your agreement. So consortium ap approach to both subscription and APCs in the transformative agreement that we are looking for, also subscription and APC based. Um, uh, I mean, uh, the pricing is important uh, for us. And APC management uh, that we concern a lot when we discuss in the, in the agreements. So we are looking for a read and publish or publish and read agreements with immediate with OA, I mean the licensing CC by or OA, pub, or OA publishing in all journal pack, package, hybrid and full OA. Transparency, of course, is very important in the, in the agreements. Cost neutrality is very important. One or two years annual price increase with zero percent is also in a uh, important for our member delivery and hosting of articles, you know, published by from the publisher platform and their preservation mining also is uh, that we are looking for, especially in the licenses. Metadata management as a, a, you know, also another concern for us, uh, you know, in the, in the licenses. Of course, watching APCs, you know, and the publishing or a publishing in the agreement national level or, you know, other level and institution level is important for us. So it should be monitored, uh, you know, very well. And of course, for more open access publishing and to promote awareness for the open science training and assisting the institution and libraries in, and researchers also is, is very important so what we did we are going slowly because of i mean the i, I told you uh, the, the turkey turkey turkey's economic condition and the the, the currency waving is uh, and uh, uh, you know forcing us a lot we are not expecting budgeting cut especially for state okay we don't have uh budgeting degrees but uh, another decrease is coming from the other economic situation. So uh, we are uh, in our agreements almost last five years, maybe, uh, I mean, I mean the, we are the, the current Uncle Stern committee is coming from the uh, 2018 till present. But before that, of course, again, I told you we are as an anchors, we, we were pioneering, especially in open access and open science, to do many research, research we're working uh, on research group and, and publishing many articles, you know, about anchors, open, open access things, you know, uh, and support the open access in Turkey. But last five years, I can say that we are dealing with transformative agreements. We started with IGI Global, I gave hear the database name, but we did three articles, uh, you know, for per subscribe institution, also the greater, also give some uh, transformative agreement option to some universities, you know, not the, the whole, whole pack. Also some negotiation, especially, again, last five years, we are discussing a lot underway for 2022 with alternative transformative version so one of our the biggest again uh, agreement for 2020 uh, one is the uh, Cambridge University the Cambridge journals online journals this is the one of the uh, we can say the big big uh, challenge and success so I'm not giving the all number here because of the con confidential uh, information but we can say that about one million dollar uh, you know normally we, we were paying before APCs before uh, before uh, the the the read, read uh, before the read and publish agreements uh, and we were paying just for i mean the, from our members institution just for uh, uh, 
pay around same numbers in here for subscription number, almost same, same, same count, I can say same number. So for uh, 150 articles, but the, with this agreement, we got really great success and the, we can say 50%, you know, uh, uh, offer that we, uh, that we provide our members with unlimited, unlimited, you know, uh, uh, publishing for our members, uh, especially Hybrid and Gold open access uh, journals, we, uh, uh, that there is no APC fee, you know, for them. So it is, this is great uh, things for, uh, for Turkey and we hope it's coming more we will announce and in, in, in soon uh, to all our members coming more. Of course, some problems in, in transformative agreements because of APCs, you know, cause it's are not infinite, you know, extra costs also is coming to university budgets that we cannot see. And funding issues, it's also another issue because of, we cannot, you know, follow also because for example, we're dealing with libraries, but another in the university, in other departments or other departments, they are uh, also uh, providing, they are all paying this kind of things. But thanks again, the publisher, they say you have you have a transformative agreements in your country. Please contact with your library. So we can say also another things. Also multi multiple affiliation contacts. You know, especially for the. Others also for, for libraries, I'm saying that we have to concern. Mostly original research and review articles that they are using for open, open access. Uh, so also corresponding others and who are academic and research staff, mostly they are publishing. And of, of course, to be published in the participating subscription journals uh, and open access journals, you know, this is the issue. Uh, my rector, uh, my Mesa Hojam, also, I was checking, you know, also what, what is independent, you know, the action could be. So when I see one uh, had science databases, I saw your universe name, you know, this is not the uh, on, on uh, part of your institution is coming from yours, you know, so not in the consortium. So that I would like to say, this is the Cargers uh, subscription. I, I think you have your own agreement for, for Cargers, you know, so I can, I can say that, I can, I can see that. So example for libraries, how we are announcing, you know, so the, these, I, I checked the library webpage and I, I, I saw that the university orders, they're announced. Uh, their webpage. University orders will receive tokens for free open access publishing, for example, in 45 RCS. This is not our case. This is the uh, all around the world that libraries, what they are announcing their uh, users that I, I checked. That is why I'm saying this for Hebrew journals and 15% uh, discount when publishing in gold. For example, they have uh, six gold or eight journals, they have rights in six articles. This is from the libraries that I checked what they uh, offer their user, not only, not, uh, not, not under the consortia, you know, the, or how they are managing the announcement system, you know, their web page. Also a single fee will be paid. This is for also user announcement for unlimited with access to subscription journals and no IPC we need uh, to be paid for gold open access publishing some journals, for example, they are saying. Also read and publish agreements allow unlimited open access. This is very important also for, for example, this is for Cambridge Gold and Hibbit open journals with incurring any article uh, uh, charges. So this is also from one of the consortia that I'm not gonna give the name, but how they are look, you know, about all their, their dealings, you may see, uh, this is for 2020 agreements for three years agreements. They are mostly uh, signed three years agreement with some increases, annual increases and their content. And they are the transformative agreements type, you can see that. Some of the agreements for redundant publish agreements with, with terms, especially on limiting, uh, limiting open access publishing or 20 discount or 60 APC for per year, uh, we can say uh, that, or discount on APC, especially the use discount in these agreements, you know. Another problem is monitoring. This is the French consortium uh, software that we have to deal in the future if 
we sign more agreements, you know, uh, we are following. That is why I, I received their web page. So it was an image also monitoring the uh, open access and APCs, you know, with, with, uh, this kind, with this kind of tool and uh, open software. So I'm sorry, uh, maybe I took uh, more time, but thank you for listening to me. If you have any question, I'm very happy to uh, reply. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Gustin Ocham. Inspiring talk. And now uh, I would switch to uh, Gültekin Ocham and he will be talking about open access and beyond. And uh, he has been working as the a library director at ISTEC for more than 15 years now, and he has received his bachelor's degree from Hacettepe University L Library Science Program and a master's degree from Kojeli University Business Administration. And he has been previously uh, working in different universities like Bilkent University, Sabancı, and Top Universities, including the Scientific and Technology Research Council of Turkey. Uh, and so he has great experience, proven experience in the field of open access, open science, open data for more than 10 years. And actually he has, as Gusun Oja was talking about, he has served as the chair of ANCOS between 2008 and 2012. And he's, uh, he was also the coordinator of ANCOS open access in the institutional repositories working group between those times. He's a member of the Open Science Committee, which was founded by the Turkey Scientific and Technology Research Council in 2015, and a member of Open Access and Open Science Working Group, which was funded by the Turkish Higher Education Council in 2018. So he's the experienced guide, we're learning from him. And he's the coordinator of Turkey Research Data and Open Data Task Force Working Group. A great effort, and I had the a privilege to participate in one of their workshops in their meetings and that's how I got interested in this other than my had uh, my role as the vice chancellor of the university and uh, he's been working as an open air turkey no since uh, 2011 and now the floor is yours please we'll be listening to you <clears throat> Thank you so much, uh, Rumeza Ujam. Uh, I also would like to welcome to Luciano Sasso. I know him uh, very well. So he's also uh, contributing open access, uh, open science issue in his uh, university. He's one of the important advocates, advocate of the open access in uh, this country. Also, I would like to thank you all the team of the Beis Milan University organized this uh, international webinar. Uh, I prepared my slide set uh, not for only national uh, participants, I uh, uh, prepared my slide set for also international participants. So uh, maybe some of the Turkish participants uh, confused. Uh, we know these things why he put this slide, uh, this uh, presentation. So, uh, reason of this. So, try to. I would like to share my screen. Yes, uh, title to my speech uh, is uh, open access in uh, open access and beyond. But I would like to celebrate the uh, first of all uh, open access week. Uh, Team of the Open Access Week, uh, International Open Access Week. Uh, uh, it's matter how we open knowledge, building circular equity. You mentioned uh, when speaking the webinar, it's really important. I also wishing uh, equity for everybody in the world. We will. I will uh, cover uh, different topics uh, today, but uh, I would like to start. Uh, to give brief information about uh, ISTEC. Uh, ISTEC is located in uh, Gülbahçe, Urla, Izmir, uh, one of the uh, holiday destinations uh, of Turkey. We are very lucky, we are by the sea. Uh, it's uh, possible to 
have different uh, action uh, during the year. Also, uh, I would like to give brief information about the Izmir. Uh, Izmir is a metropolitan city of the Turkey and ancient coast in the western extremity of the Anatolia. Ancient name of the city is Simirna. The history of state breaks uh, very old. According to the result, historical knowledge and archaeological equation is a main hub for exporting various agricultural industry products from its port. Today, Izmir is the third largest, largest city of Turkey with population around uh, 4 million. Climate, climate, climate is the Mediterranean with relatively mild winter, uh, winter and hot sunny summers. Uh, I also would like to give uh, information about the Israel of Technology. Israel East of Technology is a Turkish state uh, university established in 1992 to offer higher education and carry out research in the field of the science and technology. The medium of instruction at our institute is English. We currently the only international distinguished advanced technical university in Turkey. Uh, as I mentioned before, the campus located from the center of the seaside town of the Urla, Izmir. Uh, our campus is the biggest campus area in Izmir, a third uh, biggest campus area in Turkey. We have a three faculty, uh, and then we have a different uh, undergraduate and master and doctoral programs under this uh, three faculty. So, uh, I would like to talk about the, the Turkish uh, Turkey research uh, output, uh, especially article uh, based on the Saival. Uh, Turkey produces uh, 1.55 of the world publication. Also, Turkish uh, uh, publication uh, gathering uh, 1.36 of the world citation. So, it's uh, if you compare the other uh, European uh, countries, it's really really. Uh, less than uh, other uh, European countries. So we would like to increase the number of the publication. We would like to increase the visibility of the, our publications. So I also would like to give brief information about the higher education landscape in Turkey. Turkey is uh, one of the largest higher education landscape in Europe. With the uh, 207 universities, 129 of them is uh, financial publicity, and the rest of our uh, non-profit foundation universities, the higher education institution, aim for the research excellence. Therefore, it's important to be aligned with Europe beyond, beyond in the open access movement. Uh, we have uh, key players for the open science in Turkey. Uh, one of them is the uh, Council of the Higher Education Council. The other one is the TÜBİTAK, uh, which is called our nation science founder. Uh, uh, another important player is the ANKOS, uh, Anatolian University Libraries Consortium. And my colleague uh, Gülsün uh, talked uh, why uh, ANKOS is important for Turkey, why ANKOS is important for open access. Also, uh, one of the leading institutions and projects that really affected the story of the open access in Turkey, uh, open air project series, uh, Pasteur for open access project, also Medionet project, Hajetepe, and then Israel Technologies are leading uh, all these projects. So they are also playing a crucial role for open science in Turkey. Uh, maybe I would like to talk about uh, a little bit uh, history of story of the open access movement in Turkey. Uh, we started to talk uh, about the open access uh, early 2000s. Uh, open access and institutional repertories have come to the forefront with the ANCOS. We talk about uh, uh, open access and institutional repository in ANCOS, and then. Ancos became a member of the School of Publishing and Academic Resource Coalition, which is called SPARC in 2002. And then Ankara University Open Archive was the first operational institution repository set up in Turkey in 2005. Uh, uh, uh, milestone for the open access in Turkey, uh, establishing of the Ancos Open Access and Institution Repository Working Group in 2006. 
So uh, all these uh, initiatives uh, developed and improved open access in uh, Turkey. Also, when I, uh, as I mentioned before, the uh, European project, uh, European Commission project was uh, very important. Uh, and then open access, uh, uh, uh, open access, Ankos Open Access and Institutional Repository Working Group uh, between 2008 uh, 2018 uh, worked uh, too much. Uh, also, a member of this uh, working group. Uh, members uh, worked for the uh, open air project as a Turkish noir. So it was very uh, important uh, things for open access. Uh, uh, open access, ANCO's open access uh, and institutional repository working group uh, also worked uh, with the uh, uh, work with the Council of the Higher Education Council Institution Repository and uh, Open Access Working Group because the, some of the members of the ANCOS Working Group also part of the uh, uh, Council of the Higher Education Council uh, Institution Repository and Access Working Group. And then uh, because the ANCOS also suggested uh, by this uh, working group to the Council of the Higher Education Council. And then the, one of the projects started under the a Council of Higher Education Council. Uh, name of the project was the uh, Open Archive Project, National Open Archive Project. Aim of the project uh, gathered academic output uh, that Turkish University producing and archive uh, them into the open repositories, which are complied with the international standards, present them to the serve of the scientific community, and then measure academic performance. Uh, what uh, these working groups have done, uh, this working group achieved uh, many things. Uh, we prepared a website for uh, open science and open access for uh, Council of Higher Education Council. We prepared the uh, guides. We made them many presentation. We did translation. We organized proceedings. Uh, we organized workshop. We prepared brochures and posters. And then uh, we did many training programs for Turkish research community. If you, if I give you some numbers about these uh, events, uh, we participated in 123 events, uh, 26 of them is, uh, which are international events. Also, we prepared, uh, we joined, we participated uh, uh, more than 100 presentations. Also, we organized 15 webinars, uh, uh, 12 workshop conference, symposium, and seminar during this uh, one, during these 10 years. I also would like to give you brief information about the one of the important uh, milestones for open science, uh, open access. Uh, uh, in Turkey, uh, this is a really milestone event, uh, Turkish Open Science Summit, high level meeting with the decision makers and the uh, key players. Uh, first time uh, all the stakeholders come together. Uh, uh, which one the these stakeholders? Administrator of the Turkish Higher Education Council, administrator of the Turkish Scientific and Research uh, Technical Research Council, University rectors, vice rector, and then high level representative of the industrial organization and NGOs. Uh, we did this event in Sabancı University and Sabancı Museum. Uh, it, uh, we prepared lots of things for this event, the uh, promotional documents related to open air, Zenado on open access research data and uh, we put all these uh, things to the folder and distributed to all participants. Uh, more than uh, 1,300 participants followed as a uh, uh, online. Also, 170 participants uh, uh, joined the meeting as a face to face. So, it was a very important uh, meeting for the Turkish uh, community, also open science and uh, open access. Also, 
one day later, uh, we uh, organized uh, open, uh, open after the Open Science Summit, uh, we organized research data management and open science workshop. It was the first meeting on research data management. Also, around the, the 200 participants uh, joined the uh, participant that uh, meeting uh, at Boas University. After the uh, Turkish Open Science uh, Summit, uh, this meeting uh, impact uh, many, many players. So I got invitation uh, from the chairman of the Council of the Higher Education Council. We had a, a two different meetings with him. After that, the Council of Higher Education established as an official Open Science Committee. Also established a research data and open data task force, task force for uh, Chair, uh, Council of Higher Education Council. As you see on the slides, uh, uh, recent uh, Open Science Committee members, uh, uh, Open Science Committee members uh, from university directors. Uh, also advisor and then the vice uh, president of the chamber of the higher education council also experienced uh, experts from different fields uh, as i mentioned before the council of higher education council research data and open data soft working group uh, from uh, different uh, universities, six different universities, and then uh, four foundation universities, uh, representatives in, in this uh, group. The uh, aim of the, this group uh, uh, preparing data management plan, how to prepare data management plan, and then following developments, uh, the word open research data, such as open data, cooperating with the relevant institution in Turkey, also, uh, we would like to provide training on uh, research data management, uh, supporting creation of interoperable system, particular with the Europe, and then preparing reports, making translation. So uh, we start uh, to translate uh, the book, uh, which is called Engaging Researchers with the Data Management uh, Cookbook. We translate in uh, Turkish. And then also we add the chapter about the case study from Turkey, date about the, uh, related to data uh, data reviews story uh, from University of Technology. Uh, also, we translate uh, Argos. Argos is the uh, data management tool for uh, uh, powered by uh, open air. It's free, it's open for all the countries. If any country would like to use Argos as a data management tool, they can use also, they would like to translate in their country, also they can uh, translate the interface uh, in their language. Uh, uh, communication with the chairman of the higher education council, council of higher education is very important, especially countries uh, such as Turkey, uh, bottom up uh, or up to bottom uh, approach is uh, really affecting. It's not easy Turkey to bottom up approach to do something uh, because of that, uh, if you uh, have any relation with the up, sometimes uh, everything can be easy. So we have a good relation with the chairman of the higher education council. So, uh, we explained the importance of the open access and institutional repository. So after that, we prepared a letter. Uh, uh, Council of Higher Education sent that letter to the all Turkish universities uh, about the open access and open science issues. Also, uh, they request uh, established uh, from all the Turkish universities uh, their institutional repository. So after this uh, message, uh, university started to establish their story. Also, they started to prepare their open access, open science policies. Tubitak also another uh, important key player. Tubitak is a foundation science founder. Also, Tubitak Ulakbim has a, a open science committee established in uh, 2015. Uh, 
composed of academicians, library experts, and TÜBİTAK representatives. TÜBİTAK also did many important and crucial things for Turkey about open access and open science issue. One of them is Dergi Park, another them is Harman, Aperta, also very, very important tool. I will give detailed information about these uh, initiatives. Delgi Park is our national uh, open journal hosting platform. And then uh, Delgi Park support national academic journals to gain presence and according to the international standard, uh, increase their visibility. Uh, all the services uh, given by the Delgi Park is free. Uh, so if you have any journal, open access journal, you can apply to the Delgi Park and then you can uh, have a hosting service from Delgi Park. Uh, one of the, inter one of the uh, other important uh, side of the Delgi Park, Delgi Park, it's the, one of the biggest data provider uh, to the open air. Uh, uh, it's uh, covering more than uh, 2,000 journals, uh, 500,000 articles. So it's a really important uh, data provider for the open air. Turkish Academic Archive, uh, Harman, also is very important because uh, Harman uh, harvesting all the Turkish universities, institutions, repositories, uh, and then uh, more than 152 institutions harvesting under Harman, around the 2 million records. So if you go to Harman, if you make a search, you can uh, search within these uh, 2 million records uh, coming from 142 institutions. Uh, Aperta, Aperta is uh, really crucial for the Turkish community. Uh, we work too much on Aperta. Aperta established uh, as an institution repository of our Tubitak, but now, not now, from yesterday, uh, Aperta has launched as a research data repository served to all universities on uh, Turkey. So uh, it's uh, really difficult, it's really expensive to have a research uh, data repository. Also, trustworthy repository is uh, really important. Uh, Aperta uh, trustworthy repository because it's uh, using uh, Invenio which is uh, uh, developed by CERN, this software developed by CERN. So Aperta uh, really will a uh, crucial role for all Turkish research community. So if you are a researcher, if you have a data, if you don't know how to save your data, uh, so you can uh, put your data to do Aperta. Uh, TÜBİTAK also working with the Digital Creation Center. Uh, they have an agreement with the Digital Creation Center. They have a, a, a, they have a special website uh, for data management templates because you know uh, TÜBİTAK would like to have a data management plan, some support program. So you have to prepare your data management, uh, uh, data management plan for your uh, project. So uh, very recent, uh, they uh, opened their uh, website. So if you can go to the, uh, their website, you can start to create your data management plan. Also very nice and very useful, uh, very friendly data, uh, data research data management training portal. Uh, you can go to the TÜBİTAK website uh, and then you can get all the necessary uh, inf uh, information about the research data management. Also, TÜBİTAK is uh, one of the member of the European Open Science Squad. Uh, they will start uh, the work uh, with the of, uh, European Open Science Squad. So uh, this also will uh, play a very important role for the researchers. Uh, uh, it's also important for the research data. So we will try to uh, improve our skills about the research data. End of this year, uh, TÜBİTAK uh, planning to uh, create an open peer review training portal, uh, creation of the responsive research training portal, 
Also, they would like to improve their data management training portal and then uh, support it uh, with the videos. Uh, also, they are uh, planning to translate Open Science Training Handbook into Turkish, end of this year. I also, I also would like to share some numbers uh, with you. Harman, uh, as I mentioned, 152 institutions uh, harvesting by Harman, also to uh, 2 million reports. Uh, number of the registered repositories to open area 129, open door uh, 165, ROAR and uh, ROAR map use the numbers. Turkey is uh, uh, important uh, for the number of the institutional uh, repositories. We are uh, in seventh uh, within the world. Uh, first one is the United States. Japan, United Kingdom, Germany, Spain, Peru. After that, Turkey is coming with the 165 institutions repository. Also, uh, when you see the num increase of the institution repositories, uh, European Commission projects uh, really affected the number of the institution repositories in Turkey because we got the fund from the open air. So we spent uh, all the money to increase the uh, number of in institutional repositories in Turkey. So it's really created the, the butterfly effect uh, for the Turkish community. We also very good relation with the core. I will uh, tell you later about the core. Uh, core uh, preparing very good uh, a document for the institution repositories for our BC Confederation of Open Access Repositories. Uh, we translate the core community framework for good practices in repositories. It's Turkish. Uh, also, we translate the core controlled vocabularies for repositories. It's really important for the interoperability of the repositories uh, for the future, for now. So also we are trying to integrate the core controlled vocabularies uh, with the ETA GCRIS, ETA GCRIS uh, database, because it will be implementation of the good practice in Turkey. Uh, core also have a, a project uh, which is called Next Generation Repositories. Uh, ETA uh, GCRIS uh, database is, a, is also one of the example of the next generation repositories. GCRIS uh, research information system is the first information system of Turkey in international standards, which was developed with the support of the artificial intelligence and continues to improve ISTEC. ISTEC is the first university uh, used to GCRIS. Uh, GCRIS not only institution repository, but also uh, research information system. Uh, not only collecting uh, your research output, it's also providing you different uh, metrics, bibliometric analysis about uh, your report, about your institution, uh, about your researcher. It's uh, uh, collecting all the research outputs uh, come together, uh, project, awards, and uh, publications, data, patents, so, uh, so on, all the kind of uh, things uh, within the research ecosystem. Also, it's very easy to make benchmarking with uh, different uh, criteria. Another important uh, development in Turkey, uh, we work too much on it. Uh, Open access to the thesis and dissertation, Turkey has been enacted by the parliament in uh, 2018. We really worked too much uh, thanks to uh, uh, president of the uh, Council of Higher Education Council, Yekta Saraj, Professor Yekta Saraj. He really interested in this issue and then he take the attention of the uh, Turkish parliament uh, after that, the rate of the open access thesis and dissertation rise from 56.3 to 98.7. So, uh, majority of the Turkish uh, thesis and dissertation 
accessible as an open access uh, in uh, Turkey now. Uh, this is really uh, affected, uh, especially uh, this year. The number of thesis downloaded from the Council of Higher Education Council National Thesis, and thesis Center increased by uh, one hundred and ten percent in May, compared to the figure in March when the novel coronavirus uh, pandemic started to be seen in Turkey. So it's really really important for. Uh, research community. Uh, another uh, milestone is about the policies uh, level. Uh, ISTEC uh, open access policy was approved by ISTEC Senate on uh, 2013. Uh, ISTEC policy was the first open access policy in Turkey uh, sent to the Turkish University as a model policy by uh, Council of Taiji Education Council. Also, uh, Turkey uh, also ISTEC open science policy was approved by ISTEC Senate on uh, 2019. Uh, translate the uh, player model policy on open science for research performance organization in Turkish and adapted it to the University of Technology as a model. This policy also first open science policy in Turkey include details on both uh, both publication and research data. Also this policy sent other Turkish universities as a model policy by a Council of Higher Education Council. Our National Science Founder policy, uh, TÜBİTAK also open science policy, uh, approved, uh, uh, accepted open science policy on March 2019. Uh, TÜBİTAK open science policy, um, policy also based on open air model policy on open science for research funding organization. Uh, first speaker, uh, Dr. Luciano, uh, talk about about uh, so, uh, something about planets. Uh, planets is really important for all the open access open science ecosystem in Europe. Planets provide three equal varied roads for the open access. Open access publishing venues, journals or platforms, subscription menus and repositories, subscription venues under transformative agreements. So for any chooser route, the publication must be openly available immediately with the Creative Commons attribution license. So uh, as far as I know, uh, 16 or 17 uh, nations find funders like at WITAC come together under Science Europe and then they uh, expect they op uh, they share uh, with their uh, researcher uh, a plan, which is called Plan S. So if you get the project, one of these uh, science funders, you have to open your uh, research output. Uh, so the Plan S related this, uh, all these issues. Yes, uh, after, uh, I, I came to my presentation uh, another uh, important issues as you know the first journal in the world uh, 356 years uh, old uh, philosophical transaction of the royal society this this journal still continue the uh, uh, its life uh, so you can uh, find this journal now but uh, we have alternatives now we are not uh, we don't have to publish the, our research output, uh, not only journal, uh, we have uh, alternatives, uh, publishing platforms. European Commission put a tender out in uh, 2019 for the creation of the publishing platform to support all of the open access obligation for their guarantees. They wanted the bullet points. So, uh, why a publishing platform, uh, high quality, reliable and effective publishing venue for European Union research, high scientific standards, uh, ex expert scientific advice, advisor board, no cost to authors and beneficiaries, non-APC platform, venue where guarantees can publish post grant uh, the result of the work while respecting their open access obligation. So uh, uh, as a short, uh, if you get any European Union project 
uh, after the project or during the project, if you would like to publish uh, something related with the project, you don't have to publish your uh, article or uh, data, any journal, you don't have to pay APC uh, uh, because it's uh, not allowed to publish in hybrid journal, you have to publish your article in the World of Access Journal. So you can uh, send uh, your uh, article to the Open Research Europe. Uh, Open Research Europe uh, is a really uh, important uh, publishing model. Uh, if you send your article, uh, it will be published within uh, 14 days. So it's really, really nice uh, for the researchers. Uh, you, you know that uh, in a closed system, if you send the article in a journal, you have to wait uh, more than six, seven, or nine months, maybe one, one year. So it's a very uh, fast uh, way of the publish your article. It's also open peer system is working on it. So if you would like to get more details about the uh, open research group, I can give you information. Uh, some of the example of, uh, about open peer uh, system. You are uh, writing uh, your report. Uh, everybody is seeing your report. Also, if you uh, respond to your report, also all the people's uh, seeing your uh, response. So lots of good details uh, about open search group is really important. Maybe we can organize another uh, event uh, just uh, focused on the uh, open research group. Also, open citation uh, initiative is very important. Uh, more than one million uh, citation on it. Uh, another important uh, things I would like to highlight: uh, importance of the open access uh, article, open access uh, research output. It is providing a really, really good advantage uh, to get uh, much more citation. If you publish your article open access, you are getting much more uh, citation. Also, uh, recent development, the uh, Liber launch open science roadmap for the library, libraries. Uh, it's really nice, uh, really, really good uh, roadmap. Also, UNESCO very new uh, prepared a report about uh, open science. Uh, it's a draft uh, 2002, uh, 2022. Uh, uh, on February, it will be finished, but it's a draft. Uh, if you have any recommendation, if you would like to send any recommendation about your country, about your institution you can send your ideas to the UNESCO. Open access, uh, open publishing is uh, getting much more important. Uh, so uh, if you're interested in how open publishing system, you can join the open publishing fest and then get lots of knowledge about the open publishing fest. Uh, our rector is, uh, uh, Told me that in the in his speech uh, talking about it, uh, open air is one of the important key players, one of the important infrastructure for uh, open access, open science in Europe. Uh, open air uh, was a project, but it's finished after uh, eleven years. Uh, but it's an association now. Uh, last uh, July, uh, the uh, we have a, a general assembly and then we have a election. I, I elected uh, one of the executive board members of OpenAir. We will start uh, end of November uh, as a exec executive board member. So it will be uh, it will be very important uh, development for Turkey. Uh, so we would like to be not only following the, all uh, the new things, also we would like to give direction to the things about open science and open access. Senado is also a very important uh, initiative uh, provided by the Open Air. Uh, it's a, a repository 
for publication and then data. You can uh, put your data and your put your uh, publication Renado free of charge. Uh, if you put something to the Renado, you are getting automatically DOI number. So it's very important. Also, Renado played a very crucial role during the pandemic uh, for the communities uh, to share research output. As I mentioned before, also uh, European Open Science Cloud is coming. Uh, it started is one of the flagship project of the European Commission. So being part of the international community is uh, very important. Uh, open is very important for Turkey. Confederation of Rock Success Repository is also very important. Uh, they are working very well uh, for open science, open access issues. Also, they are voice of the community, voice of the open science. So we have to support uh, these uh, associations. ISTEC is the member of the open air, as I mentioned. So, Science is like a parachute. I like these uh, things. Uh, if it's not open, it's, can, it's not gonna help you. Um, uh, one of my close friends, Eva, uh, shift this uh, word. Uh, a mind is like a parachute. It doesn't work if it's not open uh, from uh, Franz Zappa, but I like this uh, form too. Science is like a parachute. If it's not open, it's not gonna help you. Open science, uh, time to unlock potential of the uh, digital science, digital, uh, digital era. Thank you so much uh, for your attention. I got your uh, lunch time. I'm very sorry. Gültekin uh, Mocam, thank, thank you for this great talk and it's not stealing from our lunch time. It's just uh, putting <laughs> Lots of information and availabilities for all of us interested in research and publishing. And we also have this talk. Let me just take a step back and Luciano knows about it. This webinar series started as Stronger Together. So when we get together, we become stronger. And we have seen it actually during the last two years with the pandemic. And in fact, I have a question to forward to all of you. Anyway, thank you for all of the lectures, great lectures. And I have collected a couple of questions and I would like to shoot it to all of you. And one actually starts with money, financial issues, and all of you actually talked about it. And mm -hmm. the theme of this year is actually the equity of availability of uh, data or publications or knowledge, let's call it that way. Mm -hmm. And any solutions, I know there isn't a solution, one solution for this uh, mm -hmm. to go over, but um, if we don't have any money, I realize that with your talk, you're taking Ojama and Gusun uh, and actually Luciana, that there are ways that we could use and we don't need to have that much money to reach out to the research that is available or the publication. So any tricks to be given to our followers or to ourselves, to the universities, the administrators uh, to run over uh, financial issues? You are on mute. Uh, now you're on mute. Uh, I was just saying this is a big question, but let's start from here and then I'll ask the easier ones. <laughs> okay. You get so, Luciana first. Uh, okay, I, st I start. Okay. So thank you. Thank you. It's a, yeah, indeed, it's a big question. I also want to thank uh, the other two uh, speakers, really, because they provided a lot of information. So congratulations to, to both of you. Um, so this is the main point, indeed, because uh, I have the impression, I mean, I've been dealing with this topic for a long time. I have the impression that we, we are in front of a, you know, a dichotomy, in a way, <laughs> because, of course, experts, uh, librarians, I mean, heads of libraries, I mean, they know the issue very well. But still, scholars <laughs> do not know very well this issue. This is the main point. I mean, because... Uh, I have the uh, privilege to let's say work <laughs> on both sides. I mean, uh, uh, as a member, I say of the leadership of my university and the uh, UNICA, and so I, I talk to you know several colleagues, you know, at this level, 
and they know well. The, the problem is, of course, librarians they know everything, but then still <laughs> scholars or young people like PhD students, postdocs, to be very frank, blunt, they don't care so much about <laughs> the whole problem. What they care is their career. They want to publish in good journals. They want to make a good scientific career. So we have to look at this issue and we have to respond to this issue. So to make sure that all what we are saying to, today that is very relevant will be well understood by everyone and uh, we can manage to, to find good solutions, including, of course, the financial solutions. And of course, there are you know, agreements you know, and different possible solutions that can you know, uh, create discounts, they can create some, but still very often, my experience is that very, very often, uh, a scholar, a young scholar, maybe does not have in uh, his or her own budget, the money for the APC, he or she wants to publish in a specific journal. The journal is asking for 2,000 euros. What is the solution there? I mean, basically, it's not easy. So I think we need to move all together in a direction that can solve this, this big problem. Of course, if you have a, a European uh, funds, I mean, very often the problem is directly solved because, okay, you can, you can use that money to pay for the for the fees, etc. But very often you don't have that money. So basically, the point is, institutions are still paying uh, quite a lot of money in subscriptions to traditional journals, and uh, we have to try to go. If we want to move towards open access, we have to try to encourage the community to go towards open access, making more money available for APCs. So let's say in each laboratory, and this is again as, as a strategy for rectors and vice rectors, they say, you need to design, I think in each institution say, okay, we can put that kind of money on this initiative. And of course, the money will depend on the institution and the country. It's, it's, it's, uh, and then you need criteria to use that money. This is also another big point, how to use it. I mean, if you have, let's say, okay, you put as an institution, 1 million euros, for instance, on, on open access publication. And then who can use that money? For which journals? You know, that's another big discussion, I think. But so, mm -hmm. so I think committees should be there in place to look at the, this issue, look at the profile of the institution, look at the journals that are probably the, the most important to look at. So it, it's, a, it's a big problem. But I think, again, my, my let's say, <laughs> take home message is, Let's work together because uh, uh, uh, otherwise, I think some of these events, are not, uh, that's why I like this event because I have the impression that we have a, a mixture of you know, people with different profiles in this webinar. I think uh, uh, if we just talk about open access among experts, <laughs> we don't go very far away because uh, again, the experts, they really know very, everything, but we need to find practical solutions to help scholars and young people to publish in open access. Thank you. Thank you, Luciana. And I would like to just forward this question to Gusum Mojam, uh, because I had received a question, how ANCOS plans to help with the APCs and et cetera. We heard from the European side, let's hear your opinions or suggestions or tricks. Yeah, uh, in our agreements, especially, we will ask more unlimited open access publishing to our uh, stakeholders, especially in our written publish agreement. But if we not get unlimited open access publishing, of course, we will ask you know for APCs, high num number of APC number in the agreement. For example, in each institution, maybe 100 APC. But it's also about... Uh, the universities uh, or scholars situation in Turkey, we have to follow, follow the very carefully how many articles published in the interna international base in, in the international area. So this is the important things that when we uh, negotiate with a publisher. So this is, um, if it is higher, high number of the articles, for example, in case of Germany, they are publishing more than, uh, I mean, uh, uh, I think uh, 9,000 articles, you know. So 
So which means that we have to be a, a negotiate when we deal that the, the, the, the, the number of uh, higher uh, APC number, you know. So if it is not, we have to ask more discount on APCs, you know, we will uh, discuss with our uh, uh, stakeholders and we will discuss with our members. But what I recommend uh, also, thank, thanks for Luciano, also, he's, he also explained, but I would like to, uh, you are rector and you are getting uh, more with rectors, you know, in, in, in your meeting, higher education, uh, at council, you know, so uh, if, uh, uh, the library budgeting is not enough for uh, transformative agreements, you know, time, time to time. Uh, they want to enter, but when they look their uh, publication numbers, maybe this is not high, higher numbers, so that maybe they're they not coming, you know. Uh, for uh, they are not coming to member, they are not coming to libraries, you know, time to time that we are discussing. So in, in country base, we have to promote more uh, open access publishing and we have to promote more as a consortium transformative agreement or agreements, you know, in, in, when, when, we, when we sign on, we, when, when we uh, discuss, you know. So more promotion, more awareness, more support. Of course, we have to train our librarians and our researchers, also our um, managements, because they are asking all the time uh, academic performance of the university to, to, to marketing purposes, for ranking purposes, for other purposes, because this is also another issue for us. So if you, if you are, uh, uh, output is high number. They, if, if, if your output is uh, reach high numbers, which is very prestigious also for, for, for you. So open access, uh, you know, agreements and open science is providing this. So more training, more awareness, uh, I strongly recommend, you know, for APC costs, of course, you know, a higher number of uh, APCs in our agreements or higher number of discounts for APC payments. I can say that. Thank you, Gülten Hocam. And Gültekin Hocam, I would like to uh, congratulate you on your new position and your comments. First, let's hear about your comments or contributions to this question. And the other thing that I'm curious that I have received with the questions, um, what was the impact of, we, we, we should have some kind of reports back or data. What was the impact of moving towards the open uh, science on the publication rate? How did it impact? And I was actually, uh, one of your slides, you showed the repositories. Did I spell it correctly? Repositories, yes. Mm -hmm. But there wasn't any data regarding China. I was surprised. It was just USA and the other countries and there's nothing related to China. Is it you know, a special area, which I'm not aware of? Uh, let's hear your uh, opinion about this. I would like to start the first, uh, first, first uh, question of yours. Uh, open, open access and open science are revelation. Open science is a uh, cultural shift. First of all, we have to accept this three uh, situation. Uh, money is uh, only few, money is, money is not a barrier of the open science because we have a money on the system. Uh, around uh, two million, uh, two, uh, two billion US dollar within this system. If we uh, transform, if we direct this uh, money to the open science, we can uh, be success. So money is uh, not the important uh, things. So the important barriers of the open access, open science, uh, incentive and award system because uh, the system is uh, pushing you publish or perish. Also system is telling you that uh, where to publish. Important is not a where to publish, what you publish. You can uh, publish your article uh, in uh, Open Research Europe. You can publish your article, any open access journal. But important things is a, uh, uh, what you publish. Who is evaluating your article? If you publish any article in science, you have a good researcher? 
No. Only 15% of the article in uh, science getting much more citation. 85 of them uh, getting just the average uh, citation. So we have to change uh, our system first, incentive and our system. So we have to we have to free our researchers as a mind, also as a research evaluation. We just interested only their talent. That's my question. That's my answer. I totally agree with you. This is going to be a culture difference. And actually, during the last two years with the pandemic, that's the other question that I have to all of you. Uh, we have seen what we have achieved as globally, as global researchers or people interested in healthcare, um, how quickly we could share our data. Yeah, yeah. Think about the COVID-19 yeah. and the virus yeah. and the yeah. genome was identified. It was just yeah. shared openly yeah. and everyone in the labs tried to work, started working yeah. on vaccines or the, you know, the therapeutics. And in one year, actually, we got the vaccine. Okay, we had other issues. We had the technologies and et cetera, but we had the virus yeah. uh, genome yeah. to be distributed to the yeah. world without any money. Yeah. And everyone got together. And I realized that EU funds and Europe, uh, the US funds, they got together and they decided to divert all the funds to this research worldwide. It was without any exception. Everyone, everywhere in the world was included in this system so we actually saw that it works but yes. that, okay, that's, that, that's why because we have a two we had a two options lie or that uh, yeah. <laughs> to to totally agreed <laughs> yeah, we had because... to be quick uh, this was unexpected and yes. we saw that when we we're in crisis or when we need yes. help we could get together and work towards the best of the human population and and you were telling me, you were just commenting about who's going to um, review my article. And are they capable of knowing the technology or the strategies that I have developed? That comes into the writer's or the researcher's mind. I'm aware of it. But I still have the but. They have to be careful what uh, the previous researchers have done. And actually, the reviewer might have uh, better ideas than the other ones. We have to respect it. Um, Still, this is an ongoing uh, controversy that we have with the researchers and the faculties and the scholars. Um, but this was a, quite a good experience. Any comments, Luciana, about this? Your mic, Luciano. Your mic is uh, me. No, no. I think again, it's it's not an easy it's not an easy uh, yeah. topic. Again, it's complicated. But again, uh, I think it's good to, to talk and to involve in the discussion all uh, the uh, actors. I mean, in my view, it's really important for you know, the leadership of institutions, you know, the experts, of course, the librarians and the scholars themselves, you know, to inform them about, you know, the, also the, the advantages that, you know, open access can, can have. And as I mentioned briefly in my talk, first of all, is a, an advantage for the society because open access, open science means that the information is freely available to everyone. Mm -hmm. And so there are so many people who do not have access to information when the information is only provided through subscriptions. If you are not affiliated to a certain, and also depends on the institution, not all libraries are, are the same. So some are, have more sub subscriptions, some others they have less. So the open access is uh, really important in my view for, for that uh, you know, reason. But also the scholars themselves, I mean, can get a higher visibility. I mean, when uh, an article is always open to everyone, uh, is more visible, you know, can be, uh, of course, uh, read by more people, more students. Uh, so it's something that, you know, in general, I think from an ethical point of view uh, is very important. So we need to go in that direction. But again, we need to be very pragmatic uh, because uh, 
Of course, uh, money is there. I mean, I agree that in the end, the money is there. Yeah. But to, to do this transformation is not uh, easy, let's say. Let's say. Uh, so we have to, it, it's, a, it's a huge uh, change. Uh, that's why actually we are talking about this for already, we've been talking for a long time and it did not happen yet. So, I mean, uh, in a way, COVID-19, again, in the tragedy, uh, is also giving us a further digital push uh, during the lockdowns. I mean, of course, we realized how difficult it was to go to libraries physically. So, I mean, everything that was not available online was not accessible to students and scholars. I think the society realized that uh, even uh, sometimes we forget the humanities and social sciences, you know, were actually there. A lot of information is still in the library. So we need to go in the direction of a full digitalization of uh, the full access of information to everyone. This will improve research, will improve education. But again, uh, <laughs> it will take some time. So we need to work all together in that direction. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you, Luciano. So we have to change our uh, research evaluation and metrics research evaluation system first. So if we change, if you make this change, it will be very easy, especially for the young researchers, because we are pushing them, always forcing them to publish in uh, high impact journals. It's not important. Important thing is what you publish. So it will, all the revelation take, took uh, time. So uh, open science and open access also will take uh, time. But in my perspective, in my opinion, within 10 years, we, didn't, uh, we will not uh, see any journal. So everything will be start article level, not a journal level. Okay, well, but I, I have to admit that I still like to uh, smell the pages of the books or the journals. Yeah. Still. This is, this it will take time. Really <laughs> but, but, but I know the technology is uh, moving fast. We might be, uh, acknowledging the smell of the pages from the website as well. We'll see. I'm, I will not be surprised with these uh, availability. <laughs> exactly. Some some devices uh, in the future will have some uh, some smell. So to have yeah, yeah, yeah. very yeah. very nice smell. Yeah, very nice smell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, probably try to. to I'm, go I'm still old school. Uh, sorry about that, but still, we're moving forward. And actually, I think Yusinoja mentioned about it. If you use the open access resources, you will be cited more because more people will be uh, readily reaching your papers wherever it's published. And actually um, running some of the newer journals, national journals, it makes your visibility um, more available than it would have been just a publication, a journal, uh, what would I say? Anyway. Yeah. Lots of lots of research about this uh, issue remains our job. It's really uh, increasing your citation, increasing your visibility. And that's what we need as actually as uh, national publications. I'm talking about what we have in Turkish uh, publications in different kinds of uh, disciplines. And we want to be in the uh, international arena and it will just... Uh, stop pushing our scholars to publish in uh, international journals and we would look into our national journals which will be available to everyone worldwide and increase their citation capability and etc. It's, it's, it's also okay. very important for the universities to have an institution repository. It's, yeah. uh, it's also uh, affecting their uh, funds to find the funds. If your researcher output within your institution repository, it's very easy to uh, search somewhere to find this uh, research output or for researcher. I am an industry, uh, well, I am working for the industry. I am looking for someone with the graphene. That's now, it's not easy to find someone, but if, if you have a very well established institution repository, all the research repositories indexing by Google Scholar. So uh, very easy to find a researcher or research output. Well, this is critical, looking yeah, into yeah. 
the aims of the rectors and the vice rectors yeah. uh, considering their universities to be placed at the top levels of the ranking systems yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. your collaborations with the industry or international yeah. um, universities or organizations or na even national organizations or universities is critical so providing the resources for this um, opportunity is critical i guess this is important and i yeah. um, i have one take home message for myself and my university. Uh, we heard from you that Aperta is online as of yesterday, yeah, yeah, right? And yeah, yeah. Well, I'm very much interested to hear yeah. about what we're gonna yeah. be uh, providing ourselves, our researchers, students with this uh, Aperta. And I took some notes to make sure that we learn about this uh, website and platform as well. Maybe you could have other things to add to this. Yeah. Any other comments from you? I guess uh, it's not enough today. <laughs> I <laughs> Another think so meeting too. will be started. Thanks yeah, to sure. All the participants, thanks to other uh, speakers, thanks to you and mm -hmm. your team. I really would like to thank all of you. Thank you very much. We uh, really enjoyed all of your uh, lectures and discussions. Uh, this doesn't end. This isn't easy, as yeah. Luciana was referring to, as Gültekin Hoca was referring to, this is going to be a culture change. And as yeah. Gülsün Hoca uh, made the path to the future with the uh, Turkish universities and organizations, and we're looking forward to work together mm -hmm. towards open science and open publications. And thank you for joining us, and we'll see you at another webinar. After that, I am mm -hmm. counting you one of the open access, open science advocate of Turkey. <laughs> okay, be careful with that. <laughs> thank thank, you. thank, thank anyway. you very much for the invitation. It was a pleasure. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank